Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Mike. <laughs> this is our That's podcast it. about anything and everything off road. Um, we still haven't talked about rally cars in a really long time. I swear that's coming soon. <laughs> I, I've been, I much like Ross has been talking about the person we were talking about earlier for many months. I have been talking about rally cars coming on the show for that many months as well. <laughs> so as always, we're socially distanced. We did it ever way before it was ever mandated. It's the only way we can do a show with two hosts and different time zones 1200 miles away <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. so i'm still in the midwest ross is in the northeast and mike's on the west coast yep sweet sometimes that's a guess i don't want to be super personal ahead of time be like where are you it's, yeah it's no I, I'm, what's your address <laughs> yeah yeah exactly where do you live and where do you keep all your valuables right <laughs> yeah. you've you already had stuff stolen that like your car what was that oh uh, yeah yeah my monte carlo got nicked right out in front of my house which yeah is, uh, like, you know, it literally like two days after that, I was like, I'm getting a warehouse. And that's what I did. Like, I don't, I do not keep anything outside now at nothing all. Nothing else ever. street park? No. Yeah. No, Eliminate the variables. Freaking yeah. yeah. Thieves. They suck. So. People suck. My, my, the thing that gets me is uh, we have the ring doorbell thing. And I swear every day the update on it is somebody was rummaging in our car last night. And Always. every, every time oh, I'm dude. like, did you lock the car? Yeah, I don't, I don't get that. We have a ring too, and we have like you. So you have like the neighborhood thing yeah, that, yeah. that people try. Yeah, and it's always all my packages were stolen. My car got broken into. My bicycles were stolen. I'm like, why aren't y'all locking stuff? Like, right. I, I, like, dude, put your same thing on that. Like that you? next door app. It's the same thing. It's something was stolen. My car was stolen. You know, my personal belongings were stolen out of my car. But yeah. the sentence starts with, I admit I didn't lock my car. Yeah, like, it's like, you don't have to post anything after that. Yeah, like, we know. You, you've already, you already won the failed. Darwin Award for being dumb. Yep. Yeah, already failed. Sorry, yeah. don't care. There were a lot of cars being stolen from like Darien and New Canaan around here, which are like two of the freaking wealthiest towns. Yeah. And turns out all the people who were getting their cars stolen just were leaving the cars in the driveway with keys in them. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, dig your own grave, you know? <laughs> Like, even if I lived in a gated community with a gate in front of my house, I'd still lock my car and take the keys inside. Like, I just, I, I no. So I, I, don't I, I just spent a long weekend visiting relatives living in that type of neighborhood. Okay. And I, I, I kind of, every now and then I'd go over and just like touch some cars to see how many of them <laughs> would open. Like, I didn't take anything. It was just kind of like, is this- <laughs> just leave all four doors open. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. keep going. <laughs> I, was, I was actually excited to see a lot of night because I saw an Opal GT, like in fairly Ooh. decent condition. Oh, a lot of would love so. that. Yeah. Yeah. Got so. it. I have something to talk about next time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Those cars are cooler than they have any right to be. So yeah. there's there's actual news since the last time we've recorded and Ross also was on the show. Yeah, I, I missed a bunch of shows. I apologize. Or at least two. two. <laughs> so, hey, I did remember the other night uh, while I was recording without you, like you got sick really early on where I had Joel and Robbie on mm-hmm. and then you've missed two shows. So that's three strikes. So by the way, you're getting kicked off the podcast. And it froze. Everything froze. <laughs> you guys hear me? Not at all. <laughs> oh! uh, the good news is, so here's the fun part, is everything I said will be available to the listener and the watcher. Yeah, except us. Because except I'm us. recording. So yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Ross, you've got three strikes is what I'm saying. Three so. strikes? Well, yeah. I, got, I had the flu the first time. I yeah. can't fault myself for that. And then I had COVID. So, oh. But you didn't miss any shows when, we, when you had it. No, that's true. We Probably just, to my we, detriment. We had a backlog and we're able to push things. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I forgot about you just, that. You just got a job oh. and then got busy. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Well, three strikes, I'm out. The good news <laughs> is there's, on deck. there's actual news tonight. Um, I want to start on the, the shortest one. It's that Bronco production is finally going. It's only taken a year. <laughs> and I saw one. Yeah, you saw one in person. But it wasn't a production model. It was pre-production still. It was pre-production. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Finally, finally, finally. And your and your thoughts are on it? You well, think? what are your thoughts as a Bronco owner? Uh, I, I think, listen, they're going to sell like crazy. You know, there was a, a big hole in the market for something like this. I mean, I think the Raptor, if anything, when that came out, proved that people, you know, do want to go bombing. They want to... They want to be perceived as though they're going to be bombing through the desert at any given moment, even if they don't do it. Um, and they're going to sell like crazy. They're going to absolutely sell like crazy. So it's, um, you know, I think it's a good truck. I think it's first year of production. 
it, there's probably going to be some stuff that's going to crap out because every first year card does, regardless of, of how well they're built. Um, <laughs> yeah, 37s and a 2.7 uh, twin turbo. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. going to last. That's that's going to last 100,000. <laughs> I mean, come on. So it, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I got a lot of buddies, a lot of people that I know have ordered them, and I think that's great. Um, I hope they enjoy them. I'm resigning my my opinions <laughs> until I get behind the wheel of one and see what they're like and you know, yeah. All I know is I haven't been able to break mine and it's 25 years old. Right. So if, if I get into a new one and it craps out immediately, well. But the old one comes from the age of like overbuilt products because they had to be, they were anticipating a certain usage, you know? Oh yeah. Not, yeah. not the same three year turn it in on a lease or like trade it in on something new life cycle. Yeah, I think, I mean, the new one, listen, the new ones are going to be better than anything old any on any day, right? I mean, they're going to be able to take some more abuse, um, but it's all about the longevity of the things, right? With all the technology and everything, are you going to see a brand new 2021 Bronco 25 years from now? Or is something, you know, are you going to have, you know, are you still going to be able to get the electronics? Are the parts still going to be available? Everything goes now. We're on that three to five year to seven year life cycle. And then it's out of production and it's done. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it doesn't pay for the manufacturers to keep stocking the parts. And so you kind of relying on the aftermarket where now, you know, I, I can literally get every single part on my truck if I need it and it's, it's got 12 moving parts, I can fix it. If something moves, you know, it's just, it, they're, they're easy and it'll run for another 25 right. years. So, right. Well, exception like, to the rule being Toyota, <laughs> which yeah. 14 years into a model run, they're like, um, it's maybe, the, the maybe forerunner is <laughs> yeah. still the same foreigner, right? Like the forerunner is, the same is foreigner since 2010, but the Sequoia, I, think, I love it. I think that's the best thing ever. Like yeah. why, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And Toyota's like, no, we'll still sell every single one we make. We'll just bump the price by a grand or two every single year. Very much. And, you know, it's, they're, I mean, they're, they're bomb proof. If you buy a forerunner today in 30 years, the thing will probably still be on the road, cranking down the street. It'd be fine. Some, I just, yeah, some. I, I actually bought Chris's old forerunner. He sold me a 2005 V8. Was that 2005. the, oh, V8. Yeah. And uh, I sold it last weekend. Okay. And it had 270,000 miles on it. And it was like perfect. Hey, you um, sold it for more than you, than I sold it to you, right? Yes. Good. Okay. Yes. Good. But the market took a huge swing in that time, but okay. So I'm good with that. I wanted, I wanted it to benefit you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. It got me through a new England winter with a Miata as the other vehicle. Ooh, um, yeah. Mike, but to your point though, I just looked it up. Jeep sold 229,000 Wranglers in 2019, Jeez, which yeah. You know, That's a lot. that number has risen every year since the JK was introduced. Mm -hmm. And a total so of that, that 26 will go off road. Gladiator sales yeah. either, right? That doesn't include Gladiator. Gladiator was selling terribly at first. They couldn't move them. And then they've taken off. Uh, but it's a huge, huge, huge void in the market. Mm -hmm. And Ford looked at Jeep and, you know, went, oh, fuck. Meanwhile, you know, Chevy's naming like an Equinox a Blazer. A blazer. Yeah. yeah it's the same like yeah. they did they ford did to the bronco what dodge did a good job of when they brought back charger and challenger they did a good job of a modern retro look yeah. same thing with like the mustangs mm -hmm. but like didn't do it in a way that we were all like oh i don't know like there are enough styling cues and i i still haven't seen one in person and i want to be next to it because yeah. i i think it looks smaller in <laughs> images than it actually is it well, is go ahead mike it, it, it's it's i mean i saw one in person and it's it's not that small the bronco sport is minuscule that's a right. tiny yeah, that's, that well, that's a ford escape i mean yeah, it, you know literally yeah. um but i mean to your point yeah i think ford did a great job with it. i mean i think it looks the business right um people that have no idea i mean kids and when i say kids i mean anybody well that's younger than me um <laughs> I got They're, called a kid you know, at work today, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, they, you know they, they'll see stuff from the 1960s and up, up until the you know the mid 70s, and the cues are are totally there. Yeah, and I, they they, they really did. I think they they did a nice job with it. It looks great. So, Chris, can you share our Instagram the pictures that I took of that thing? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I grew up in a Jeep world. You know, my dad had we had more Jeeps in my childhood than I can count, and. I knew about Broncos because he had a Bronco back mm -hmm. when he was like 
22 maybe mm-hmm. and oh yeah um you know and i knew it from pictures and then growing up obviously you learn about it and learn about it and this thing is like it's a it's a bronco you know in person eliminate the bronco sport from your mind and if you mm-hmm. see the if you saw this on the road i mean obviously there's people who don't know anything and would assume it's a jeep just because it's a four door sure. suv and the roof comes off um but it, it the cues are bronco you know the shape is bronco uh it's so it, clean <laughs> yeah well it's it's a fucking ford rep demo uh yeah. but it's you know the um the greenhouse is small like the the door line the window line is higher yep. than the jeep and it okay. even though it's like comparably sized it it looks physically bigger than the wrangler yep. and also just because like the fenders are pushed all the way to the corners on both sides mm-hmm. um but it, it's it, it has a presence i uh you know i'm still not sure if those if the fenders are okay or not they're it's like I still get a kick out of the Goodyear Goodyears because they won't let Goodyear put Wrangler on a Bronco. It confirmed it. <laughs> I checked. That's the first thing. I, I, I think that's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> it feels but, a little petty to me, but it's the kind of petty I like. Well, that that's the other part. Like I miss the days of just where manufacturers could just do shit and get away with it. And I, it's not even getting away with it. Like, you know, it's, it's like watching old movies or old television shows where you would see a Ford and it, it actually said Ford on the car or it said Dodge or it said Oswald, it said whatever the case was. Now all the emblems are blacked out. And it's like, really? It's yeah, like, like they didn't like, they didn't get that cleared with legal. Yeah, it's right. like, come on, guys. Like, it just takes <laughs> away from everything. It sucks. Yeah, wasn't in their budget. Yeah, no. Blomp. No, so anyways, Broncos finally fucking coming, people. So, oh, my mm-hmm. God. Broncos coming, but what's going to be here first? Is that a, a nod to me? Uh, it's I, to I, whoever looked at the show notes and knows where I, I want to go next. Oh, <laughs> oh I, actually have the show, I actually have the show notes in front of me, too. I should look. Uh, Bronco is pretty... Uh, oh, the Ma- you think the Maverick's going to be uh, here first? I think Maverick's going to be here first. Okay. I, okay. I may have even uh, overseen some tweets today uh, of someone who has ordered both a Bronco and a Maverick, and okay. a Ford rep mentioned to them that the Maverick will probably arrive first. What do they call that when it's 18 wheelers an elephant race? So <laughs> I don't I don't understand that reference. <laughs> how, how much do you think the Mavericks is going to cannibalize on on uh, Ranger? I think quite a bit oh, sure. because it's so much cheaper. More than Ranger cannibalizes F 150. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, the I mean the Rangers all. Have you guys driven Rangers? Uh, I haven't driven one. I've been around. Uh, I've been in so them. They're old. They feel old. Do you think? Because they, they've been, they are old. They were like 2000. I mean, it's like 10 years old. 2010. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They've been around I in Brazil that. and all those places forever. Right. That. Oh, Mike, Mike just may remember. I saw the Global Ranger in Dearborn in like 2012, 2013 going like, that's a truck we never get to see in the States. Like, because I was at the yeah. test center. Like, Camille and I yeah. got in one of them at New York Auto Show the first year that they had them. And we looked at each yeah. other and we're like, uh, everything in here is old. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. It feels old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I think the Maverick is going to kill it, though. I think they're going to sell a ton of those things. Probably. Deservingly so. As much as I think Santa Cruz is going to do well, I think this is going to do as well. Uh, and oh, it yeah. comes standard hybrid powertrain. Like they're they're talking 40 MPG, the MSRP is you know in the what? 20s. <laughs> like if they pull that off and they get 40 MPG and it's a hybrid, it's not a full EV, right? Right. So you're going to get everybody that wants to kind of uh, almost go camping right meaning they'll pull into a camping lot and then yes. plug in something they'll trying. put their mountain bikes uh, yeah but they're not gonna nobody's gonna hardcore off-road a maverick right um because that's not what they're designed for but it's it's kind of like the Honda ridge line in that sense right it's it will literally do everything that any other truck will do it'll just do it a hell of a lot more efficiency and i think for 90 percent of the people that's what they want well i have a ridge line coming next week to test so I plan it's can tow five thousand pounds, and I plan I calculated on like forty nine hundred with what I'm You're planning in. to You're fine. behind it. So we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, the the Maverick is like you remember in the nineties and when like there were small pickups, and you would yeah. actually oh, yeah. see them in the city like and be used. 
Oh, no, like Mazda B2000s exactly. and Chevy yeah. Loves and yeah. stuff like First that. First gen sure. Tacomas, oh, yeah. T100s, like S10s, that kind that's of stuff. That's what I grew up with, man. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's what this is going to fill the void of, you mm-hmm. know? But I mean, it's when was the last time we had something that size? The last Ranger that was actually small was 2000. Oh, yeah. 11, 10, 9? Well, I mean, I have like my F 150 that I had. I actually just sold that truck. Um, Did you? Yeah, it literally left today. Some like a couple from New York State bought it. They flew to California and they're driving it back to New York State. Oh, that's gonna be great. Which is, I was like, all right, have fun, see you later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sign the title and, and, have, and enjoy. And they, yeah, <laughs> they took off. But I mean, I mean, that's a. It was a single cab short bed F one fifty. It was a full size pickup truck, and a neighbor of mine had a. Um, I think it's a twenty eighteen, and my God, next to the twenty eighteen. That truck looks minuscule. It looked tiny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just at, you know, they've grown so much and they've got all this this body cladding and all this extra crap on it. And I get it, right? It, it's all safety and, and so on and so forth. And that's fine. But the the sheer girth that you're lugging around in today's trucks is just, it's ridiculous. And so, you know, having an old truck like this, it, it, it made life just easy. Right. It just yep. it was easy and it worked. And I and I hope the Maverick is somewhat like that. I hope it's not weighed down with so much extra shit that you can't use it, you know. I yeah, that's I think it's concern. rated to like four thousand pounds of towing. Like it's that's great. Four thousand pounds of towing and two thousand pounds of payload. I thought it was oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, that's the lightning. Yeah, I it's only a thousand or fifteen hundred pounds. Wrong Ford. Still yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, fuck. How many people I could probably count on two hands the number of people I know that actually tow more than 4,000 pounds. Well, like, and that's including yeah. race cars and trailers and including right. like, you know, side-by-sides and ATVs. The little right. adventure trailers are all like 3,500. Like there's a oh, yeah, 500 pound. Yeah. There yeah. might've been a conversation about a particular adventure trailer that can be towed behind a particular side-by-side today on another chat. I mean, you could listen. I mean, we were towing. I mean, it's, oh, I'm really dating myself, but like in the 80s, we were towing shit with just like Novas and shit like that. Like, yeah. it, it everybody feels like, well, I have to get a 2500 series <clears throat> to tow my aluminum trailer. And it's like, dude, just put a hitch on the back of your Buick. You're fine. It's dude, very European of you. Buddy. In the UK, a golf and like a hitch, and you're, it's 1,500, 2,000 pounds. Yeah. Done. The car weighs 3,000, whatever. Uh, yeah. Ross, you have a hitch on the Miata, right? I technically do. I put it on and then just never <laughs> used it. That was great planning on my part. <laughs> it was uh, a fun Mike, project. <laughs> but we need to send Mike the pictures of that cargo thing that you That's, had on the back of it. Those pictures can die in the abyss of the internet and I can never see him again and be happy. Mike, he had something that was large enough to hide bodies in yeah. on the back of his Miata. Okay. I had this fantastic <laughs> idea of like, oh, I can live the one car lifestyle with a Miata and put a hitch on the car, pull the bumper off, you know, drill the bumper, put a hitch on the bumper. And then bought one of those like huge hitch mounted cargo chest things. And as soon as yeah. I put it on the back of the car, just went, it's like, yeah, there's nothing. In I mean, there. Miata. Yeah. yeah. The Miata leaves on Monday, by the way. Mm-hmm. Also, because... sold. okay. <laughs> also sold. Yeah. Going to DC in his new life, <laughs> which not that far considering the uh, 400 went to Mississippi. Nice. Oh, wow. Wow. Is was right. It online. Expedition Portal. Oh, okay. Like you know, you know, I have a, a site that I know a guy. We could have worked that out. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the auction patience. Hey. <laughs> I, I listen, we had that whole conversation. I uh, <laughs> listen, it works. I mean, you're talking about a time where used cars are like, in. Old. I mean, I, I don't know. I did really well on an old F one fifty. I can just <laughs> tell you that. So, fair enough. It's yeah. we we had this discussion. Mo- there's, at, there's money to be made. Yeah, we had oh. the discussion at work today. A guy's got a like I think it's like a 2018 or a 19 suburban. And he's like, I'm getting nickel and dime by these dealers around here. I was like, hold on, we have some options for you to list this thing at. Like sure, sure. yeah, they were like I, somebody was offering like 32, somebody else on like 33, five. Like it hmm. on a 19, like mm-hmm. he's got he's only got like sixty thousand miles on it. Like it's it should be more yeah. than that. Definitely. <laughs> oh yeah. Because they're going to turn around and flip it for 50. So Of course they are. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. I think I think we covered Maverick. 
my, my thing that I'm looking to the future is how many teenagers are going to be driving Bronco sports and Mavericks coming up in like five to 10 years as they all get used and cycle. A lot out. of them. three to five. Yeah. Yeah. Bronco sports, especially, I think that'll be, they'll be every Bronco sport. will be like the new Wrangler, so, right? They'll be cheap. Oh yeah. They'll be it's, slow. Yeah. It's like renegades, you know, it's like, it, it'll okay. be like, yeah, it's not, it'd be fine. They'll the buy local, it for the first car. The local driver's ed program is driving white ones on steelies. Oh, uh, that's fucking baller. Yeah. Like they are mm-hmm. as base as you can. Like there's no tenting anywhere. Like you can look yeah. clean through the greenhouse. Like, How yeah. much money does your local driver's ed program have? I don't know. There's like that seems like an expensive around. vehicle for a driver's ed car. My driver's ed well, car I mean, was like a 1992 Buick with no AC and no radio. That was a Chevy Lumina. <laughs> yeah. I had a citation. Well done. Oh, oh Jesus. man. That, Old I GM thing. went for the shit. worst one. <laughs> uh, it was it was a shit box. It was a, it was a proper shit box. It really was. Oh. Uh, God. So Ross, I didn't tell you, but I finally got the crossbars mounted on the suburban. Woo! Yeah, had them for like three weeks and just never <laughs> got up there to do. It's Doesn't it already have rails. It's got. I'm, side I'm throwing rails. up the horns for your rails. So. Yeah. I, well, you went down both sides of the truck. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Texas is way south, but we're good. Um, no, it has the side rails and it has fixed positions where you can put the crossbars. Does it also have certain positions where it says place here for best gas mileage on high and wind no. noise? No. <laughs> you have four locations. One is aggressively to the front, which I, where I mounted the front one. And, and then your, your options are like halfway back, three quarters of the way back, fully back on the side rails. It doesn't have like spaces where you can slide them back and forth. It's literally screwed in at those th- four locations. With and this uh, is in- for the Montana trip. Yes. So yeah, I got them up there. I wanted to make sure it could fit in the garage. I had my wife like look as like, and then she gave me a ton of crap because her truck is slightly higher. <laughs> the, the Sequoia with the roof rack is slightly taller than the Suburban with its crossbars on. And I was like, shit deservingly given. Yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. thank you. Also, it means I didn't wreck the garage, so thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, more, more importantly, a house is still intact. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but the next thing I need to do is I need to get the Yakima down out of the loft in the garage and get it and up on top and dro- go driving around and make sure it feels good and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But like, it's a thousand degrees here lately, and I don't want to lift a six foot black thing on yeah. top of anything right now. <laughs> like, it's so no. hot. No, it's 107 here today. It's awful. Holy Good shit. Lord. You're fairly far north in California. That's not normal. Yeah, no. Today, I mean, I'm right outside of San Francisco, and today was the hottest day we've had all year. So it's it's yeah, yeah unseasonably it's, warm. Yeah, yeah, it's hot. That's yeah. hot. Yeah, my my yeah. kids at a sleepaway football camp right now, and he's actually should be finishing practice now because they canceled the practice in the afternoon. They're like, it's too hot. We're going bowling. Yeah. Oh yeah, we'll practice later. And I was like, good. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> yeah, I was like, he's gonna come back like 17 pounds lighter. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're so, going to give you 14 pitchers of Coke before you bowl, and yeah. then you're going to go outside and practice football. So so far, the camp has been fairly conscious of that. Like, <laughs> and he's smart enough to know, like, I need to drink water and Gatorade. Right, well, that's like, good. Yeah, that's right. slippery slope. He's, he's reached an age where he can <clears throat> start to make his own decisions, even though he missed dinner last night. Anyway, that's beside the point. Like, he's not old enough to then solve that problem on his own. He had to go find a coach and be like, hey, coach. I'm right. Dinner. Yeah. I was like, just order <laughs> delivery. Anyway, no, that's... So, Ross, do you want to tell everybody what you're waiting on? You've now sure. said that you sold the Ford and you <laughs> sold the Miata. Like, yeah, I, I did what I said I was never going to do and sold all my not new shit and ordered something new. Brand. So, what'd you get? Finally broke down and ordered Jeep. You did? Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I spec'd it out. So I've been thinking about this for, I don't know, probably since I bought my 2018 Forerunner which mm-hmm. drove up like to Maine to buy three that was, years ago. That was four years ago. Four years ago. Going on, uh, no, three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. Online math is fun. Yeah, um, but I made money on that one too, which was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, that actually lives in Kansas City now. So so what'd you buy? Yeah, so, so uh, JL Rubicon. Um, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, V6 manual, had okay. to. Um, and I, I went through like the option list 
and spec it out exactly the way I want. Like all the shit that I didn't want to have to worry about adding after and no, yeah. nothing like excessive. So it's like cloth seats, you know, stick, um, that kind of stuff. But I, I got, you know, heated seats and like heated steering wheel because it's fucking cold here. Sure. And I, I don't want to put that stuff in myself. Um, and then, you know, LED lights and tail lights, which I also don't want to, like having yeah. a warranty for that stuff and peace of mind for it is, I have so much other shit going on that this is yeah. going to make life so much easier. Right. Um, but the other options are, are pretty minimal. Um, skip the steel bumpers. Cause you mm. know, the factory steel bumper is notorious for like taking one like tiny hit from a rock and bending and pushing into the body, which is okay. not what you want your steel bumpers to do. No. And then yeah. the only other uh, options were, I got both tops. I got a hard top and a soft top. I'm going to do the Smart. swap. Yep. I'm going to okay. do the swap summer and winter. Uh, and oh, what else did I order? <laughs> gorilla glass. You can get gorilla okay. glass on a Jeep now, which is like, apparently also the reason that it takes eight weeks to build these things. So, okay. Like on the windshield or windshield. Like... Yeah. Okay. Three layers of glass on the windshield because the Wranglers have notoriously soft windshields. And I've had to replace the windshield on most of the vehicles that I've owned. So, so like you're trying to avoid rock chips and things like that. Trying to prevent rock chips from spreading. The Gorilla Glass supposedly doesn't prevent rock chips, but it prevents them from doing like the crazy spider cracks. Okay. Uh, the same way with the phones, you know, with the tempered is, glass and the phones. Is Connecticut not like, uh, I remember when I was in Florida, like if you had any kind of chip on your windshield, like car insurance in Florida would just replace it. Connecticut does that, but I plan to drive this like all over the country. And if I can just, it was $96. Um, no, it's $95 MSRP to add the Gorilla Glass. It was $85 invoice. And I was able to place a factory order at 8% under invoice. Wow. Well, that's pretty good. Okay. So the dealer literally loses money on the deal and then gets the kickback from the manufacturer. So they get yeah. like half the, you know, the deficit back and they get the, you know, the kudos or whatever they have for yeah. you know for selling a vehicle <laughs> they get to um, check a box they get to yeah. yeah they get to boast about selling an extra vehicle uh, so yeah so i am shitting my pants because uh you know i've been thinking about this i the first time i test drove a jeep uh, a jk wrangler was in 2014 and I ended up buying a challenger <laughs> so okay. This has been a long path to get there, but you know, I, I kind of in the four wheel drive world honed in on the forerunner and in the sports car world honed in on the Miata. And mm -hmm. like these are the combination of dude, uh, that's fine. You gotta have a little variety. Did you decide you know? uh all terrains or did you go yeah. falcons or, or mud terrains or all terrains? So you can do from the factory, you can get BFG KO2s, that's the standard mm -hmm. tire, or you can get Falcon NTs. I went with the BFGs because mm -hmm. Everybody says it's the greatest tire in the world, and I'm curious. I mean, they're pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, I've I've taken my Bronco all over the place off road, and they're, they're pretty. I mean, they're they're great tires. They're great yeah. tires. I mean, so there's you, you had them on the truck too, didn't you? On the F one fifty? Oh, on the on the F one fifty? Oh yeah, yeah. They were yeah. on the F one fifty, and then I put um. I have a jesus what do i have i have a grand cherokee that i have michelin ltx's on and then i have a my wagoneers got cooper something or others on that so cooper like discovered et3 yeah i fucking yeah. hate those tires yeah so <laughs> Sorry, it's, cooper. Uh, yeah it's I, I i've managed to to, to run the gamut as far as off-roading tires go you know for on-road the michelins are by far the best and then off-road the ko2s just really can't be beat so I know a lot of the right thing. toe with those michelins the LTX. Oh, they're great. Yeah. They're great. They're great, great tires. 80,000 no, miles, towing 20,000 pounds, oh, yeah. 10,000 pounds. Oh, they're fine. So, yeah. yeah. So, I did, I did KO2s. Figure the truck's going to be on road probably 95% of the time. Mm -hmm. And for the off road stuff, I'll air down to like 16 PSI and the tires you're, will hopefully do the rest. Have to. You're not even going to have to, dude. I don't air down when I go off road and I bomb uh, through shit that you'd be yeah. like, oh my God, this is like, just go. But we don't have mostly, over, don't over, don't it's overthink. mostly rocks here. You know, most of the off-roading that I do is like four low crawling. 
Oh, so okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> my thoughts I love exactly. Mike's natural reaction. To that. <laughs> no, I know. No. I know. I, yeah, no. it's it, so. You know, the KO twos will be fine. Um, yeah. People use them in all sorts of crazy off roading situations. So that's the least mm-hmm. of my concerns. Just uh, heavy mud is where you'll struggle, but there's no good all terrain tire for that. Like, did you both freeze again? Ooh. oh you're back you're back yeah um <laughs> i've no, been here I, the whole time i say this as somebody who's submerged the quad in mud up to like handlebars more times than i can count and yeah. do so up to the headlights pretty much every time i go out uh i'm gonna keep the jeep as far away from mud as i possibly can mud's yeah. the fucking devil <laughs> kills mm-hmm. everything I, yeah so, well, i mean that's a, that's one of the reasons like when i left the east coast i i didn't want to do mud i didn't want to do rocks it's much nicer to be on the west coast and just go bombing through the desert and stuff mm-hmm. like that you know like that stuff like that on the, in that photo no. no no one i don't want to get dirty i don't do that <laughs> <laughs> like i just i don't Whoa. see any point in in like going somewhere that's supposed to be fun and covering <laughs> myself in mud uh, like yeah. i feel like that when i cross into adulthood i was like yeah i'm done with that i don't want to have to do oh, extra God. work later it's no, so much I don't laundry. Do any work. Yeah. I usually have to no. run that shit twice. <laughs> like it's no. it's one thing to like wash the dust off the vehicle, but like mud in an undercarriage never comes out. No, no I don't want to do any of that, man. I'm like I bomb through the desert, go to the spray off car wash, hit it with a pressure washer, go home, yeah. have it, have something to eat. Mm-hmm. Like that's it. Like I don't, I don't want to do one there. Well, part of the plan for this thing is to actually make it out west, which is something I I plan to do with a few other vehicles I've owned, and that you know COVID and other stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I want to come out and, you know, Glucker and all those guys, they always run like Rower Flats and some of the other oh, yeah. hills up outside LA. And it's like, I could do that in this. And mm-hmm. it's the first Jeep that, or the first Wrangler, at least, that's comfortable enough to actually drive for more than like three hours at a clip. Yeah. Which is why yeah. I, I, I was like, you know what? It's, it's time. It's, I, I've been thinking about this, you know, I grew up around Jeeps, so. Ah, dude, first fucking, you only live once exactly i mean that i think too many people way overthink shit you know what i mean it's like you get yes. to adulthood buy what you want That's... don't stress over <laughs> it and you know if you don't like it you can sell it it's not that big of a deal that i mean take it from some i bought five cars this year like it's <laughs> not ready? rocket science fucking yeah you can, yeah i mean you can it, you sold some I, of the, them it's okay i sold some of them i'm yeah. I, the whole thing is is to experience as many cars as you can before you die at least that's what i want to do so like i will buy and sell stuff all the yeah. time i'll look at something and be like that's really cool i think i'm gonna buy that and then mm-hmm. i go buy it and then if i have to sell it fuck it i'll sell it It doesn't matter to me yeah you know it's it's it's, it's all about buying the right thing that's going to give you the experience that you want and then buying the right version of that thing so you can mm-hmm. then sell it for hopefully more than you paid for right that, that i think is really important like That's I'm, I'm fully on board for buying as much as you want but like I, I, people will be like hey i'm looking at this dodge dart i'm like does it have a v8 and they're like no it's got a slant six i was like you probably shouldn't buy it then because nobody Don't buy else that. is gonna want it do Don't not buy, buy it, it. yeah right. but there they're are still four it, people so. that want that yeah <laughs> I, I mean i get i get questions like that all the time I'm like should i buy this should i buy that and then people get all butthurt when i'm like do not buy that. Although like your you, choice is wrong. <laughs> but up to a certain point, like Turbo Trans Ams, most people would say, don't buy them. But if you buy the right one, you make the money. <laughs> and is that car gone already? On. That car's gone. Oh, my tur- oh yeah. I, so I bought oh, my fuck. Turbo Trans Am. And it again, right car. Bland, a, band, a Y84 Bandit Special Edition 36,000 mile car. Right? Brought it back home. Drove the shit out of it for a year and a half, sold it, made six grand immediately. Nice. Last year, last May, I bought um, a Nocturne Blue Trans Am with Camel Interior. Yeah, those are the two I had, right? So that's okay. I bought the the Turbo Trans Am, and then I bought the um, the Blue Trans Am underneath, which I sold a month ago. So that Trans okay. Am is on the final episode of Top Gear that's showing now. Right. Oh, the blue yeah, yeah, yeah. If you the blue one is, yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you saw, watch that, that, that's the that's the Trans Am that Rob Caudry's driving. Okay. So but again, it's the right car. It's the right color combination. It had the right spec. It was it was fully sorted. Fully sorted. Like get in that thing, drive it across the planet, needs nothing. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, then you will make your money on the back end. 
right? And yep. I think so yep. many people don't do that. So many people be like, well, I could save like three grand if I just buy this one. And then they put seven grand into it and they're underwater. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? Right. Like, right. If you, you buy, like- if you buy a $48,000 performance pack two Mustang and your goal is to make it a GT350, just buy the GT350. Buy, but it, that's it. It's going to hold its value a right. hell of a lot better. You're going to enjoy it more. And I mean, obviously you buy what you can afford and, and that's great. But like, it's all about buying the right thing. Mm-hmm. If you can't, if you can't buy the right thing or you don't have the cash at the time, don't buy it. Keep the money in the bank and save up. Like it's, it's not yeah. rocket science. Like yeah. you don't have to go spend the money. No one is you, forcing you to spend No one is right. There's no you to spend that money. Yeah. 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 Speaking of Trans Ams, if you stumble upon a 77 Trans Am in brown with a manual, holler at your girl. Cause okay. that, that was my dad's, uh, he had a formula and then he had that when he was like in his early twenties and he's, okay. he sold it for the Bronco. Yeah. and has wanted to find one since and yeah. the right ones never come up so yeah i know they're, that's they're around car, man. but it, it i mean they're around you you have to look i mean i look at probably three to five hundred cars every day right Jesus. i have alerts set all over the place and then before oh, i go to bed i'll sit on the couch and i'll look at craigslist and facebook and hemmings and everything else how do you have time for that i can't well, keep that's, up that's with my, cars and that, dids and fucking you know what shower. i mean it, it that's my decompression so yeah. I'll look at those vehicles, and if I see something, and I, you know, and I'll and I and it's fairly local, I'll go, yeah, all right, I can do that, you know. And mm-hmm. it's you, you just have to be ready to jump on it. That's the whole thing. Like if you're gonna do it, and I, I like the chase, I like the hunt. Yes. And so I'll I'll research something and be like, I really want to experience this, and then I'll research the shit out of that car. I'll find the exact one that I want. I will buy it drive it for a year or whatever the case is and then flip it or sell it or whatever the case or, or I'll keep it like my Bronco my 96 I bought that truck and I was like I knew I was going to like it I did mm-hmm. not know I was going to love it <laughs> and so the Bronco's still here and is that I supposed to be it. a flip it was it wasn't supposed to be a flip it was supposed to be a this is a really nice truck I got a great deal on it it's super low mileage and then I started driving it and I was like this thing is great and it fits it fits me like i'm 6'4 240 right so yeah like i'm not a small person so for me i there's nothing is is slammed up against my leg it's got a ton of headroom the visibility is great it's got plenty of power it looks good it's from the doors forward it's an f-150 where they made 19 million of those fucking things so i can get literally every part it, you know, ever calling LMC and it should, truck on a moment's notice. Dude, <laughs> I have it the oh, yeah, day. You, yeah. In your past life, you would love that. Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's just, but I like it. I just physically like to drive it. I like to own it. It's a fun truck. So I'm going to hang on to it. And it's low. It's only got 107,000 miles on. It's not a lot of miles. So 107. Jesus. Not yeah. even a 200 yet. Like, no, it's, it's, it's a low mileage truck for, for the year anyway. So, That's but it's great. Good. So, but you'll like your Jeep, man. You'll like yeah. it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it and, uh, you know, roof off, doors off in the summer seems mm-hmm. like the best thing, Yeah, you know, and plus you're near the coast, mm-hmm. I'm near the coast. It's, it's the manly beach convertible is what it is. That's what, that's yep. why I had a Jeep when I lived in Florida. Like it was, mm-hmm. it was that, exactly. or I had to go find a Corvette to run on the highway. I went with the Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, but you know, given my commute and my daily lifestyle and the off-roading that I like to do. Yeah. Front and rear lockers, you know, sway bars mm-hmm. come off with sure. a button and fuck. It's, it's the V6 is a known entity. The manual is mm-hmm. a known entity. Yeah, you're good. Everything else is known entity. So yep. Drive the shit out of it. But good. yeah, I'm 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 in the phase right now. I know the Miata leaves on Monday and I don't know when the Jeep's gonna be delivered. It could be like it could be four weeks or it could be four months. As right. like the production cycles are all fucked up, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm starting the Craigslist crawl for like, what's under what's out there for like a thousand bucks that I can just beat the shit out of for like three months, dude. Any you know? Oldsmobile <laughs> Buick or yeah. you know whatever from the 1990s, just Crown go find Fix. a Park Avenue that yeah. a grandma has a dent in the fender and buy it for fifteen hundred yep. bucks, and oh, that's so it. great. You know, I yep. can't wait to see you sit on a couch. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Ross talking about going cross country. Mike just went cross country. Mm-hmm. Most of it, right? Yeah, we yeah we did thirty six hundred miles. Good lord! From yeah, where we to that. where? We started in uh, Grand Rapids. We went from Grand Rapids to 
Lansing, Lansing to Rockford, Tennessee, Rockford to Memphis, Memphis down through Texas, uh, all through New Mexico, um, and then finally back up to San Francisco. So, and then we went everywhere in between that we just felt like being like, that looks cool. Let's go there. And we would just go there. So we spent uh, 22 days on the road. Holy crap. Yeah. We spent That's 22 true. days on the road, um, filmed a whole series on it for Hemmings, which is cool, which is coming out in fall. And then, and a completely untested vehicle. Like it was an 81 Suburban. It was an X-Forest service truck. And the green is it's, great. Dude, it, uh, dude, dude. It's, it's a killer truck. I mean, it's a, it's a killer. I was driving it today. Um, it's, it's a great old truck and it's, um, why the, um, go ahead. Well, fin finish your thought and then I'll, no, no, just a great old truck. Why, why the suburban? So, all right. So we're, we're filming, we're filming a series for Hemmings and the series, the series is called road to improvement. Right. And it's, it's a, it's a build slash travel slash road trip. So I am not a fan of build shows because they're all bullshit. Yeah. I'm not a fan of bullshit. As fake as fake gets. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I'm not. I don't want to see a truck or anything that's built in a studio in five days because that doesn't happen, right? And then never see it again, right? You'll maybe you'll see it at SEMA, but you never see it do anything. So you never get to experience if the parts work. You never know if there are fitment issues. You never know if there are vibrations. You never know how all that shit works. So <laughs> we we created this show where I was like, well, fuck it. We're gonna take this this truck that's completely untested. And we are literally going to upgrade it in real time as we're driving across the United States. That's, that's such killer. a good idea. Yeah, that's so, so good. Oh, dude, it was great. And so we we contacted a bunch of men. We contacted like Silver Sport Transmissions and Edelbrock and all these different. Um, we basically just opened the SEMA phone book and we're just like, what about this and this and this? And like, Took a I map what and I, just went, okay, dot, dot, dot. And yeah. Then... <laughs> yeah. And like, I knew what I wanted to do to the truck. It's it, For me, it's like at my age, I want to be comfortable. I need to be able to cruise on the highway at at least 80 miles an hour. And I wanted to do it in some semblance of style. And the Suburban was great because it was such a base model vehicle that it was easy to upgrade. You could climb into the engine bay. If it, like, I'm not a mechanic. I can fix and break shit. And Alana's the same way. She's definitely more competent than I am. But we were able to, and it did break down like a couple of times that we, we got through. It wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but we proved that each and every part that we installed on this thing worked. And that's what <laughs> nobody does. I love him climbing we did. in the engine bay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Climbing like, in the engine that bay. Dude like, straight up. <laughs> yeah, straight up. I know it's, it's the best. It is the best. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I assume that's between, between idea. yourself and Alana, like your powers combined, like there wasn't. Other than a complete and total engine failure, I figured you guys could figure most of it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, we're good enough that we've been around this stuff doing it, you know, long enough. And, I mean, I've driven old cars across the country probably 20 times, you know. And so, you, you know what's going to – you know, you know your fuel pump is going to take a shit. You know you're probably going to burn a coil or a plug wire or a distributor. You know that. Yep. Odds are a starter is going to take a crap, especially <laughs> in a vehicle that's 40 years old that's untested. Right. So like I have in the back of my 68 charger, I have this big box and I call it my oh shit kit. And that, <laughs> oh, that, shit. yeah, that kit has been, that kit has been developed over the course of my 20 year ownership of that car. And so anything that's ever broken on a road trip goes into the oh shit kit. Right. Because <laughs> I drive that. I mean, I, I will drive that car, like I drive that car across the country tomorrow and I wouldn't even think about it. You like, should sell and market that. That has a place <laughs> for people who actually drive their vehicles, Charger, Suburban. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. I, like, I know. It, you know what? And I, I try, I, like, I priced it all out. It would be exorbitantly expensive. <laughs> but it's it's one of those things that people fail to to do. And it's like, go go to AutoZone or whatever your thing is buy a starter, buy a fuel pump, buy some antifreeze, buy a bunch of zip ties because you're going to need those. Yes. Buy a toolkit. You know what? And don't don't overthink it, right? When you're talking about these 40-year-old vehicles, they're, they're not complicated machines. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, people freak out if something happens, whereby if you just take a step back and go, all right, well, what's actually happening right now? Yes. Right? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm overheating. Why am I overheating? What's what's going? Something is 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 the radiator hose clogged? Is it yeah. the thermostat not working? Is this not working? Is it really just too fucking hot? I mean, so you you just learn, and I think just because I've done it so many times, the anxiety level 
drops. Um, the, the experience of getting in and, and doing it a couple of times on small things, like, especially on older stuff like this, like I, for, for a job working as a marketing person with zero mechanical background, yeah, I watched a 79 Bronco get torn down to the frame. And then I watched them oh, yeah. put it back together. And after a while I was like, it's just adult Legos. Like it's, there's it's really nuts and bolts, man. It's, it's not, not that, that bad. Stuff. Like no. other than like shim and body panels that look like the most adjustment, like drive shafts matched up. We were good to go. Like it's, it's not, it's not bad, you know? And, and that's, that's kind of what we wanted to prove with this. And, uh, it was great. It was great. Like the truck was fantastic. I mean, the improvements that we did to it were all stuff that we basically did three years worth of improvements in three weeks and then, <laughs> and didn't stop. Like we were filming 15, 18 hour days, almost every day for 22 days. Good and it Lord. was, um, Jeez. yeah, no, it was a grind. It was a grind. I'm, I'm thinking of the data files, like the terabytes Man, oh. of video. <laughs> every mean, we have, day. Every well, day. you know, like I've been, I've been shooting video for a long time and you, I've gone on shoots with that are big, massive productions, and the amount of waste that you encounter is is obscene. Yeah. You, you know, people, 14 people and seven tries. Mm -hmm. It's like, give me a break. So, like, we had literally that was filmed by two really fantastic camera guys. We had a driver and a paramedic with us, and myself and Alana, and that was it. We had two vehicles, suburban okay. minivan. That's, nice. what, and, that's what I figured there's yeah. a minivan. And, and, and that was it. <laughs> and you can, you can be ultra efficient. If you do it that way, and if you have some semblance of a plan, you can't have everything planned out because there are so many unknowns. But if you give yourself kind of a mental checkbook and a mental guidebook, you can get through it, you know? And I mean, like, I had a, a, every single stop planned, and then Alana was just outstanding at being like, we should go here, and we should do this. She found shit that I hadn't <laughs> even thought about doing. And so, uh, you know, she... Some of the best stops we had was just Alana looking at a map and be like, why don't we go check this out and check that out? Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Like you might think that we get on each other's nerves. We had a lot of fun together. We really did. We had a wonderful time. I, now she might tell you something completely different. She might be like, that's, <laughs> that's like, I don't want to ever want to see that son of a, yeah, son of a like, bitch <laughs> again. <Yeah. laughs> sure I out. think we had a good time. Uh, that thing had no headliner in it. No dude it had fishing rod holders in it. Oh, that's killer. It, yeah, it had no headliner. It was like driving a kettle drum across the country. <laughs> did it did it have AC at least? We put AC in it. You put AC. So in, okay. we we got really lucky because it was still relatively chilly when we did the road trip. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. but when we got to Texas, we went to Old Air Products and they put that was one of the upgrades. We're in Texas. Well, we don't have AC, but put AC in it. They did. One thirty four A. Oh yeah, yeah. In two days, they put an entire. This was not an AC truck. They mm -hmm. put an entire AC system in this thing. It's amazing. And it worked. It frees you out of the cabin. Worked great. Dude, those, those systems that they put in classic vehicles now are amazing. Dude, they have that shit down. Yeah. And that vintage air stuff and all that. Oh, yeah. And we watched them, again, climbing under the hood of this thing. And, again, every – and you'll see when the series comes out. But everything that we did was something that – it wasn't for – like do it just for doing its sake. It was, how do we make it, how do we take this 40 year old vehicle and make it work in the 21st century? Mm -hmm. Right. And so you do things like you do fuel injection. Edelbrock did fuel injection on it. It works so great. Fabulous. Right. You turn the key starts oh, a God. piece of cake, yeah. right? <laughs> um, air conditioning, put the AC on. Now you're cold. That's what you should be as an adult. You should be cold when it's hot. <laughs> yep. AC works great. Right. Five speed manual transmission over the shitty four speed that was in there. Nice. Fantastic. I can now cruise at 80 miles an hour as opposed to 60 miles an hour. So now you've taken this vehicle and you've enhanced it to the point where it is drivable from an everyday standpoint. The old 350 just chugged right along. It blew a little smoke, but eh, whatever. It's old. Um, and it's just, it was great. It was, it was great, you know, and it's, it's only going to get better. And the cool part is we worked with uh, SEMA Cares, which is the charity organization around SEMA that benefits um, underprivileged children. And we're going to auction this thing off at SEMA this year. Okay. Hell and, yeah. Yeah, which is really cool. And so all the, you know, every dollar that goes into this thing and that's spent on it goes to charity and it goes like the winner, you know, whoever wins. I mean, all the, the proceeds from this thing will go right to the SEMA Cares Foundation, which mm -hmm. is wonderful. So. That's um, so great. Well, let us know when, uh, that. when that is, you know, about to go live. We'll share that with everybody we know. That'd be great. Yeah, I appreciate that. That'd Say, be great. Uh, end of October, early November? Uh, a second, when's SEMA? Second week of November? Something like that, normally. I'm, 
supposed to go for work, so I should. Oh, you have to go to SEMA this year? I have to go to the the trade show that is like the day before SEMA. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Stay it's, through SEMA. It's yeah. not at SEMA. It's at the other convention center. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I was at LMC, I, I went to SEMA, and then other reps went to the other show. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I, w- I walk like 22 miles in a day. Like, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. that's SEMA. Yeah. yeah. So no, seriously though, let us know. We'll share it in all our communities. You know, yeah. all places. No, we, I appreciate that. We can. Um, that's a good cause, and uh, it's a fucking cool truck too. Gotta say, it's, so, it's good. It's burly. It's my favorite era of suburban is the square body. The only yep. one that I like better is the three doors generation in front of it. But like mm-hmm. packing four kids into that thing's not. <laughs> you know what, man? We were thinking about that and. Compared to the Suburbans of today, this thing has so much room. Does it? Because you don't. Chris owns oh my a Suburban God. of today. It's, so. <laughs> dude, it has <laughs> it has so much room. I mean, we had we had camera gear, we had equipment, we had. I mean, we we probably had fifteen hundred pounds of shit in the back of that thing. And oh, man, it. I mean, it's so much bigger because you don't have these super thick door. Now, granted, new cars are obviously a, t- a thousand times safer. Right. But you had. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not. You have eight pillars that are this big, not that big. You have door panels, like doors are, are this wide. They're not that wide. And so your interior space is is massive. Yeah. Is when you were, just when massive. you were describing the inside of the Bronco, I was thinking about sitting in my 2017 Suburban. I was like, I touch things on every side. Yeah, you can reach around, yeah. like literally just I'm like six, yeah. four, two fifteen ish. Like, and I'm cramped. Like, I feel like I'm cockpitted in. Nah, like, dude. The, the green truck, you're just like, you're not touching shit. I mean, you have so much room and the, with the bench seat. And then we kept taking turns just sleeping in the back seat because it was just one big old bench seat. It was like a bed. It, it was great. I wonder if I could find one of those for a thousand bucks around here for not, the interim. Not in any condition. Uh, good luck. Not like. anymore. Not yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Anymore. <laughs> I mean, we, we paid we paid twelve five for this thing. And it was it was a pretty good deal. Like it was it was a super solid truck. Everything worked. Um, you know, it now like any I, corrosion on it at all. There's no rust, no yeah. rust at all. Super solid truck, you know, a little, a couple of little like surface shit on the bottom, but nothing like there's no holes or anything like that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. super solid truck. Cause it was, it was a West coast Pacific Northwest truck event uh, uh, originally. Um, but it was, it's, it's just a, it's just a good old truck, man. That's, that's all you can say. It's just a really good old yeah. truck. So found a 99, for fifteen hundred bucks, yeah, you can yeah. find newer ones that cheap, but you're not going to find a square body that cheap. No. What uh, God, what what was the last year of that? Like ninety one. One. Yep. Of that, yeah. Seventy three yeah. to ninety one square body. Oh yeah, that's a good picture. That was after I dropped literally every single person <laughs> off, and I, I was on the five coming back to San Francisco, and we tossed. I tossed a belt, and the belt subsequently, the the AC belt flew off. Hit the alternator belt, which flew off and took out the radiator hose and the plug Jesus. that was in the radiator. Oh and you just like, God. like you just sit there, you just like, fuck. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. you know you, you you pull off to the side, and this this goes back to once you've done it this many times, meaning you've broken down an old shit. You go, okay, all right, what do I have? So you look at the back of the truck. You're like, well, I got a couple of different size belts. One will probably work. <laughs> like I could, I don't need AC. Like I could just re like right. that little spigot right there. Yeah. That you see with the cap on it, that mm-hmm. is off a gas can I bought at Summit Racing, and I needed some way to plug the plug that popped out of the radio. So I was just like, "Well, I could probably just cut this off the the tip of the hose and slap it on there and just clamp it on, and it worked fine. It worked, you know. Got you the rest of the so way. So you, ju- oh yeah, got me the rest of the way home. I just I didn't run the obviously I, I was like, oh, I don't want to toss another AC belt. So I just you know you throw a belt around the alternate or the uh, the crank in the alternator, and you go. Eh. Okay, as long as the water pump's spinning, you're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, made another 300 miles home. It was fine. See, but that's that's the kind oh, of stuff sh- on trips like that. Geez. That is a, that's great. That that's an, it. And now in this scenario, it didn't help because all the cameras were off. <laughs> all the cameras were off. Yeah, there was yeah. nothing there. But it's uh, it's and you dropped I everybody like... off too, so you didn't even get to experience it with somebody. No, I was by myself. I, you know, I was just sitting on the side of the five is like semis are whistling at 80 miles an hour. Yeah. So you're like, oh, this right. sucks. And it's a good but, thing there's, a, you know, camera phone. So you could tell. Yeah, you could document happened. shit. I mean, it's yeah. not, but it just, it doesn't, 
again, I've, I, after you've done it so many times, you it's just experience. It's like anything else, right? You, you, you know what you can get away with and what you can't get away with and what'll probably get you home. And, <laughs> you know, it, everybody's got a cell phone as long as you're in. I mean, I broke it down in shit in places that you'd be like, you are never getting out of here. So oh, yeah. like on the side of the five with a bunch of tribe, that's fine. Yeah, mm. that, that's almost overpopulated. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> right. It's, triple A goes a long fucking way. Absolutely. Cell phone triple A. Because yeah. how many times have you been back and forth with like the Charger and the Daytona? Oh, God. Um, Jesus, I, I've driven the Charger coast to coast four times. I've driven the Daytona at least three times. I've driven the, the Charger has been to like Montreal and then like from New York to Montreal, then down to Key West, then back to New York. It's been to... <laughs> The Daytona was driven from New York to Vancouver and then down the West Coast and then back to New York. Oh, fuck. I drove it like three years ago. We drove it from California to Michigan for Roadkill Nights, then back. I'm like, there. people always, nights. Oh, yeah, man. people don't, for some reason, they just freak out when you say, you know, oh, I, dri- I drive these cars. And they're well, will it make it? Oh, I want to make yeah. it. Like, it was, it was made to make it. It wasn't, cars were not made to, to break. And like, if you maintain stuff, they will always make it. You just have to say, mm-hmm. you know, like I've tuned it up. It runs great. Like what people did, have, they've been driving cars since 1910. <laughs> Shit's going to get there. Like, don't, Dude. this is where I go, always go back to don't overthink it. Yeah. Make it work where you feel comfortable with it. Get in, turn the key and drive the fucking thing. It's fine. the same it's thing as when I started telling people I was going to drive the Miata through the winter. They're like, you're out of your fucking mind. I was like, okay, wait, like my dad. When I told him I was going to drive him out of through the winter, he was like, you're, you're a lunatic. Like, you're going to die. I was like, okay, what did you drive through the winter in the late 70s and the early 80s? He's like, mm, Firebird? <laughs> what kind Snow of tires, tires, man? What kind of tires did you have? Uh, whatever was on the car. Exactly. People used to, like, just because, you know, the people, norm. That's because people don't listen. They look at the internet. <sighs> And they say, you can't, I mean, back when I lived yes. in Queens, I, I had an E39 M5 and with a set of Blizzaks on the back of that thing, it was unstoppable. Oh yeah. Right. So, I mean, if you, if you literally have a set of snow tires, a set of Blizzaks and, and a posi rear, you're good. Like you mm. will make it. If, as long as you're not an idiot, you'll make it. <laughs> so and, well, everybody in this day and age, as a like, lot of people it, in Queens are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was, it was a great car. I should say it was a great car until it wasn't. Um, that makes sense. As, yeah. as BMWs are. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great car until it wasn't. Um, <laughs> and then at that point, you just drop back and punt. But it's people just overthink shit and they don't realize that vehicles, anything from 1960 up until now, will get you anywhere you want to go. You know what I mean? But people, they, they talk to people on the, you know, you can't do that with this. You can't do that with that, well, which is complete <clears throat> utter horse shit. Yeah. You know, it's like, that ties perfect. Like, so we're an off-road show. There's thousands of people out there who buy something off the showroom floor. And the first thing they do is lift tires, armor, winches. Idiots. Idiots. And, and they've never even touched dirt before they do all that stuff. And w- like, we always, you know, the recurring thing is like, just fucking get out there. Just go like do stuff and explore, you know, like people don't have any idea what what they're driving is capable of the I same way if somebody it. has like an s2000 and all yeah. they've done is like commute to work like if you put them on fucking lime rock they would shit their pants well i know? mean most people you know like i I've, I've been a track instructor road race instructor for probably 15 years right and so i would get guys that would come to the racetrack and they would be you, you get porsche guys ferrari guys corbett whoever they were right and they'd be they'd decked out in their race suits and everything else and i was like <laughs> oh man what do you, you know, drive you know. every day Right. And they, oh, I have an Acura or I have a Mercedes. All right. Go home. Get that come and back. come back <laughs> because they would they they would buy these things and they had no idea of the capabilities of what these cars can do. And when I first started instructing, my 68 Charger was my track car. Right. And that's oh, you're awesome. talking about a 440 with an 800 double pumper on it, leaf springs and torsion bars in the front. So and I good. would go out and I'd have guys with with Corvettes and I'd be like, I'll make you bet. See if you can stay. Uh, you go out first. You go out. I'll you start. <laughs> if I catch you, fine. And I would catch guys in this fifty-year-old, you know, lump of uh, lump of metal, and we'd go back into the pits. And I'd be like, 
are you ready to listen to what I have to tell you? Right. And I think that's the biggest thing. Anybody, if you take a stock Camry right now, okay, I guarantee you a capable driver in a stock Camry will go out and trounce, it, you know, a, a novice in a 911. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, you, you know, and it, like C6 you're talking about off road, also fucking fast. Oh, <laughs> they're fast. What it I should be. Power. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's like off roading. If you take a, like, I remember when I first took, when I first got my Bronco, the, uh, the vacuum hubs, didn't work and i almost got stuck and i was like ah shit but it's got an lsd in the back mm -hmm. right yeah. so i climbed up stuff that i was like i probably won't make it up there i made it everywhere and that's the whole thing vehicles are so so capable and people feel the need to impress everybody else so they go out and they put all this superfluous bullshit on and they say, i spent 50 grand on this well you're a schmuck <laughs> right, as opposed to going off road and seeing what it could do in base form, yes. which is so much more than you think it can do. Hundred percent. And I, I, I don't get it. I, you know, and I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm jaded. I feel bad. I'm probably everybody's I, probably gonna be like, man, fuck Musto. He no, know I mean, no, no. I think you make Mike looking at your trucks. You make the first modification that you should. You, you put a, a solid all terrain tire on the truck. That's kind that of where you need to stop until you go do a bunch of stuff and realize what you then want to go do further. Yeah. Get your feet wet. Like you all know? terrain tires, <clears throat> maybe a set of traction boards just in case. Yeah. Right. It's like off roading, like obviously there's a lower risk level on the quads, but I'll keep the quad in two wheel drive until mm -hmm. I get myself in a situation that requires four wheel drive. Yeah. Because at that point, you know it's not my skill that's limiting what's happening. It's yeah. the actual physical traction, you know? Yeah. And a lot well, of people do the inverse. <laughs> if you, do you, you guys know Zach Clapman. He's been on your show, right? Yeah. <laughs> like two yeah. weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. So Zach, Zach is awesome. So years ago, myself, Zach and, and Thaddeus Brown, we filmed a series called Big Muscle, right? And yes. we did a thing for BFG. This is when the KO2 first came out. Oh, and yeah. We took a stock E30, uh, 325i, E30, okay? All we did was we, we literally went out and we took a set of uh, BFG KO2. We mounted them to the original 14-inch Coke bottle, you know, cap rims. <laughs> the best. I, I put a skid plate under it. We took it to Pahrump and we went over, what the fuck was the name of that trail? There's this crazy like up and over th and it's it's straight up like rock crawling off roading, and this little BMW with an LSD and a mm -hmm. set of tires went over every. This thing had it had like 190 That's... 190 thousand miles. Maybe it had seven horsepower. I mean, and and it climbed up and over everything, and it's just. You you that's the car. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> where'd you where'd you find that picture? That was that's fucking crazy. fast. So, Mike, Mike, when I grow up, I want to be Zach Clapman. So <laughs> I... <laughs> that was a great car. We had a lot of fun. We I bought that for twenty five hundred bucks by you know some guy in San Francisco, and I brought it to an off road shop, and we we literally put an aluminum spoiler <laughs> underneath it with some sheet metal. We mounted the tires. Didn't do it. Ate oil like I've never seen a car eat oil, but. It made it, and it's just everything is capable if you just give it the chance and stop listening to people that don't know what they're talking about. What it was an E thirty two that they used in, a, I don't know if it was a drive. You it know, was, it was the it same was, car. It, that it was the same car. Are you, where are you finding these pictures? Uh, yeah, I'm googling. Google. <laughs> oh wow, I, I gotta, I gotta get the Wheeler Pass. That was it. Yeah, yeah, that thing was great. Uh, great no, because Zach Wheeler Pass is one of the ones I want to do in my Jeep. <laughs> Yeah, Zach, Zach told us <laughs> it went from, it went from uh, this. Should buy an E30. That's a fantastic idea. And then the drive used it as, it was like a Jeep Renegade versus this versus something else driving up a mountain. And Matt, I think, was in the E30. And I thought that E30 was pan. black. Oh, that's funny. It became black, yeah. I think. Oh, no, that's the that, same I, I think that's I think that's a different one. Is oh, that I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, we sold this one. I'm pretty sure Zach sold yeah, this I th one. Yeah, I, I think the one they used was also the one they used at like, Road America yeah, or the, something. It was Atlanta, but yeah, or VIR. Road Atlanta. VIR. Yeah. yeah. But they had the a car. car. Yeah, that's what I, I had an E30. Yeah. I wonder where Mike, that thing ended Mike up. when you Google your name and car things, lots of stuff comes up. So 
Yeah, no, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Battle stuff. wagon shows up too. Like that was the best car ever. I love miss that. That was, that was a good old truck. That thing comes up old. in conversation frequently. The roadmaster. It was great, dude. That was I mean, we used that for that was another that was a twenty five hundred dollar purchase from you know, some dude whose grandmother had it. We proceeded to beat it to death for three years and put forty thousand miles on it and then I sold it for fifty eight hundred bucks. Like it's it's but there that was a fabulous thing. And that's uh yeah, like you said, the, you know, just capable, capable I, I would buy another one of those if I could find a really nice one because super comfortable. We'll would sit on the it would sit on the five at eighty miles an hour. I mean, the only thing it didn't have was the LT one. It had an old L O five, which was like 190 horsepower, which it was kind of anemic, but you know, as a as a car, I mean, Zach would Zach would beat the crap out of that thing. I mean, he was drifting that thing. He would try to kill it, and it never died. You guys did an never episode died. where you drag raced it, didn't you? Like, yeah, it's yeah, that's the one I was remember about that. Yeah, it was great. And an LT one drops right in. I'm oh yeah, same thing. I'm trying to find the the Safari version. Somebody Safari a Roadmaster, and I can't. That was like, on. Uh, oh yeah, that was a Cars and Bids car. Yeah, yeah. Sometime in the last six months. Yeah, have like, there's a there's a couple of them out there. You have like D window, you know, wheels and KO twos mm-hmm. or something. It's and some hard. like ten grand. Fuck off, seriously, seriously. Ten grand, ten thousand one hundred dollars. Not surprised. He probably had like thirteen dollars in that car. <laughs> well, I mean, he that stole roof the speed basket, limit sign, right? Yeah, like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the the bumper is made of like you know like tubing some welded tubing from his backyard it's great dude the most god bless it's good like for him the the american racing wheels ko2s and a yak i think those are cr- those are craigers are they craigers Not ARS, yep. yeah 55 dollars a piece yeah right i i bought those for my via cross back when i had it and they were 48 dollars through summit mm-hmm. yeah. so i mean the thing is great and look at it it's great i would drive that every day this- it actually kind of reminds me of my van the Br- britax isn't that british British lights, Britax. I think that's Defender stuff. I don't know. I don't that's know. cool van, or that's the cool. Only, uh, that's cool wagon. The only foreign light company I know is Light Force, and those are like fucking that's thousand also, that's dollars. That's definitely each. Australian. They're Stryan. Yep. Uh, I I'd buy one of those to for my dick around car in the interim, but I literally don't think it would fit in the parking spots. <laughs> so no, it's they're big. Yeah. Roadmasters are big. Yeah, great cars. I just had great that cars. Sequoia for a week and like that thing barely fits in <laughs> any fucking spot here so <laughs> i i loved your description of it because i it, it was everything i expected you were like it's great on the highway it sucks a lot of gas and i was like yep yep yeah that's about right it used half it used just over a half tank of gas between stanford connecticut and beach haven lbi which is the same distance that last year a uh, hurricane, you know, turbo four cylinder Wrangler used a quarter tank of gas. So, oh, dude, look, you know what? I feel for you, but not really. Like, I've got a wagon here that gets six miles to the gallon. Yes. So, <laughs> I don't, I don't even want to hear it. Like, it, no, it, it I, is the. I, I, I've never, I've never seen anything. Like, I, 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 when I first got it, I was like, it's legitimately broken. Like, something's wrong with it. Like, there's a hole in the gas tank. What and engine is that? I started doing research. It's a, it's an old AMC 305 360. or something. Oh, 360. Jeez. Yeah, but it's the mo- literally the most inefficient thing. And then I started doing research, and everybody's like, no, that's right. You get six to eight. And I was like, Jesus. So that motor is coming in about a month. That motor is coming out and getting thrown in the garbage. Um, Hemi? And I'm, uh, no, no, I'll put an LS in it. Oh, okay. I'm putting an LS in it. Yeah, Much better. I, I assume yeah. the Mopar ties was going to get you a Hemi. <laughs> yeah. No, Mopar is already. I mean, listen, we're we're doing a, a red, a, a, you know, a worked red eye motor in the Daytona. So exactly. Like Do- <laughs> Dodge and Mopar know where to spend their money. So like mm-hmm. that car is being ripped apart as we speak, and that that's going to have like 900 horsepower. That thing is going to be that. That's going to be a whole nother level of of um, uh, kind what of ridiculous. Rear diff is going in that. Eight and three quarter. Really? Eight, eight and th- oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes, we're seeing your family rear. right now. Just say so you no. Know. You're seeing what? Your family. Your family's up. What? Beautiful yep, picture. They're all up. Beautiful <laughs> picture. Stupid screen share. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So that's an eight um, quarter that's going to get that much power. And and how much does that weigh? Like thirty four hundred pounds. Uh, forty. Well, actually, we, we just weighed it. It was forty one twenty two with the four seventy one stroker in it. And um, it's more than I thought. So an eight, eight an eight and three quarter is is a great rear as long as you build it. And when I built this, fuck, fifteen years ago. I mean, we've got a true track in it. We're going to beef it up a little more. But like, I I will never take this car drag racing. You know. Okay. Um, so, but with a really good set of axles and a nice true track in the back, it'll hold 800 horsepower. It'll be fine. That's, you know, because yeah. it's, I mean, it's going to do just what you just saw, right? If you, if you yeah. nail it, the back wheels are just going to go up in smoke. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, it's more like roll racing. If you were going to even think about it, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's going to be a learning curve for me because I remember in 2018, we bought a demon and with the traction control off the demon would step sideways at 70. I mean, that's a legitimate, and that's on 315 drag slicks. I mean, that is a legitimately oh my God. fast, fast car. You know, people can't win at drag racing because it's two-wheel drive, and you just can't <laughs> hook. The Daytona is going to have more power than the Demon, and it's going to be through a solid live axle. So you're talking about, mm. it, it's just, it's going it, to, I got to learn how to drive it. I got to relearn everything that I, have you know, right now it's 550 horsepower or something like that. That's what it was. So with another you know, three, 400 horsepower on the, you know, to it, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be sketchy. It's going to be sketchy, so but great. it's going to be Sounds hilariously like. fun. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. The, and it's an eight speed. So you have like four years that you can laugh in. Oh, it's going to be great. I mean, it's, and it will work exactly as the, you know, the red eyes work, right. Mm-hmm. It'll blip on downshifts. It'll do everything. The transmission is going to work exactly as it should. It's going to have air conditioning and cruise and everything else. So and it's going to be, it's going to be, I, I'm, like Kevin Wesley at Wesley Motorsports, they're doing it. And his philosophy is great. He's like, we just make it work. He's like, it's not rocket science. You just, you don't give it to a customer unless the shit works. And so we're, we're bringing it in, yeah. in July of 2022. We're actually scheduled to go to the Nürburgring with it. Oh, fuck. Oh, that is <laughs> yeah. killer. That's awesome. Yeah. We're going to be the, the first Daytona in history to run the Autobahn and the Nürburgring in a 69 Daytona. Oh my and God. Um, it's, I mean, there are other companies like, um, Oh, what is it? The garage guys. I think it's their, these guys on Instagram, they just built a 226 mile an hour Bonneville Daytona. Oh, um, and it's, I mean, there are some wicked Daytonas being built out there. My whole thing is odds are they're never going to be driven. Like unless they're, you know, like their car was a full on drag car. Like it's full on race car. Like where I'm going to drive, I'll, I'll put another 60, 80,000 miles on this thing. I will drive the shit out of this car. And yeah. I mean, Nurburgring, like, like, I know, like yeah like I, I know roadster shop i think is building one and i think there's a couple of other companies and i'm already like poking the bear i'm like come on bring them out i'm like let's go <laughs> like let's go to sonoma raceway let's go to laguna seca let's go play you you have an autobahn and nurburgring goal oh yeah oh, yeah oh dude we'll do it i'm not i'm not even like, remotely concerned like we'll do well, it no i mean do you have like a speed you want to hit on the autobahn and a time you want to do on the nurburgring no None whatsoever. Just, I just, just don't want to die. Just doing it. Just yeah. Don't die and like. Yeah, I mean, I think come home. Speed is. Know. Yeah, I mean, I've gone, I've gone fast. Like I've gone almost two hundred mo- uh, miles an hour on a motorcycle. I've gone one hundred and ninety in a car. Oh like God. I'm not. Like there's stuff that I've already done. No, thank and you. now <laughs> at, at my age, I'm just like I just want. Like I want to do stuff. I want to experience stuff. So, like on the autobahn, sure. If I can go one hundred and ninety on the autobahn in that car, fuck yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it all day long. If I can make it around the Nürburgring, you know, and not crash the car, it'll be fantastic. You know what I mean? So it's, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm too old to go out and, and try to like prove anything. Like I'm not an 18 year old kid. I'm not going to go out and try to put this back together again <laughs> because I just don't want to. And I don't, I don't want to get hurt, but I want to go out and I still want to have fun and I still want to experience as much as i can so if i can be one of the first guys to to say i drove a 69 daytona around the nurburgring then i'm gonna do it because why i'm fortunate enough to to have friends and and to to be in an industry that that allots me to do these wonderful things and i will i'm taking full advantage of everything that i can possibly do because i mean you know i I don't know if you you know craig morrison or you know from uh morrison chassis craig was a a good friend of mine and and literally just passed away which is a big sin and he was 44 he was 44 right so you get you get one shot you you get one shot and it's i've since i started in this business i've always had a motto which is just never say no 
right? So if somebody says, do you want to do this? You go, yeah, I want to do that. You want to do this? Yeah, I'm going to do that too. Well, do you want to do this? Oh, fuck yeah, I want to do that, right? It might scare you and it might, it, it might, people might be like, you're going to do what? What do you have to lose? As long as you're not putting yourself in like danger, like immediate yeah. life deadly danger. Calculated f- risk. Yeah, fuck it. Well, yeah, put your big boy pants on and go do it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, a lot no, of people I mean, don't. A lot of people just sit on the couch, man, and fuck that. I'm too yeah, old for that. It's, I'm tired of the couch. Like it's it's a lot worse sucks. to say you regret not doing something than doing it. Mm-hmm. That's too that's the thing I've been no. trying to yeah. carry through. Like I don't know. I grew up like you know timid and and reluctant to actually do stuff in fear of failure or like mm-hmm. humiliation. What is the worst could and, that could? What is literally mm-hmm. the worst that could happen? doesn't fucking matter honestly like it doesn't fucking doesn't matter. matter nothing Start over. matters it's fine doesn't matter but yeah no i mean as long as you don't die you're good the worst that happens but is you die and then you don't know that it went poorly yeah you're already well, dead I, doesn't I have, matter i have so many friends that are just you know like when we do these these road trips right and they go oh well yeah i've always wanted to take a road trip i'm like you got a car they go yeah i go you got a week of vacation they go yeah i go get in the fucking car <laughs> it's like i said it, it's not yes. this isn't you can you can do it it's not it's not a difficult thing. You just have to say, I'm going to do it. And and people will always fall back on excuse, but I don't have anybody to go with me. All right. I, I don't have a hotel. Man, get in the fucking car, stay at a motel six and for 80 bucks. Sleep in the car. Sleep in the car. Like <laughs> get a bigger car. Like, yeah. Just, again, it's, so we like, get a bigger trips. car. you know, when I was in high school, I had an 89 Tercel. I mean, it was the biggest shit box in the world. Oh, and, but you so know what? Good. We drove that car everywhere and we would make it scream at 90 miles an hour and it got us everywhere and it 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 took us to places and we did things in it and we we had no money was it a coupe uh it, it was actually it was it wasn't the hatchback it was the coupe didn't zach drive a tercel on one of that's what he had in all cars it shows yeah yeah he had a he had a, a i think it was a hatchback oh yeah that's literally Almost exactly what I had. I had to. St- I couldn't afford hubcaps. I just had steel wheels. God, okay. All of those fucking cars. That looks like the Subaru. What was yeah, that? Yeah, that was great. The XT it's like everything from the eighties. Yeah, everything. That that thing was great. Yeah, it had I think seventeen horsepower, but it had air conditioning, <laughs> and it it ran good. And it you know, it, it people mm-hmm. people I think are just this photo's nicer than it needs to be. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I had. Except mine was white. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. I would drive a shot. Just, it was great. It's probably you could probably find one of those for under a thousand bucks, Ross. Fuck yes. Oh, and then it's going on cars and bids, dude. And you, I mean, it got forty so. miles to the gallon. You could fill it up back then. It was you know ten bucks to fill. It was a great little car. The the ones I've I've enjoyed seeing lately are the the four wheel drive uh, Tracel wagons, wagons that are that are yeah. making a comeback of like oh yeah those, of those are expensive and, if you could find them yeah yeah. I found one out in like middle of the nowhere, high country, like Northern Colorado. And was like, I'm going to go get it. Yeah. And then I actually like really thought about it. I was like, I don't really need that. It's like AMC Eagle four by fours. AMC Eagle. Uh, yes. Dude, you don't need it. It's not about need. Right. If and you looked in my garage, nothing. nothing in there is needed. Nothing in the automotive world is needed. It, it no. was more to the point of like, which kids are we not going to feed? Well, well that's see, that's different. So yeah. you're in a different. Like, I don't have children, so like you, you have people that you actually created that you were responsible yes. for. Yes. Like, yeah. So that that's your fault. Yes. So like it, you, you did also that. that too. It's entirely. My fault. <laughs> you can feed the child, or I can feed the car. I feel, yeah, I, yeah, feed my offspring, or just yeah. go buy a car. I get that. That's fine. Reason, like you get a pass. You get a good pass. There's a reason there's a Sequoia and a Suburban in a garage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Who's driving the yeah. bus today? <laughs> Should buy a bus. bus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. Anyways, I need to wrap things up as because uh, it's late for you. It's it's East Coast time, and <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I gotta I gotta finish writing a Sequoia review. So I'm sorry. So real yeah. real fast, uh, Mike, do you want to plug? You got stuff to plug. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I think the biggest things to watch out for are uh, Road to Improvement, which is going to be on Hemming's YouTube channel um, yes. probably within the next three months. It'll pop up cool. and we'll start seeing. We'll do announcements on it. Um, otherwise, you know, if you are looking for any type of car, go to Hemming's. We've got 25,000 classified ads. And um, otherwise, you can just follow me. The biggest thing, honestly, is just Mike underscore Musto at IG. And uh, 
I don't know. Like I got a bunch of stuff that I like. Just let's look. My my fleet changes on a daily basis. So give your own. You want to talk cars? Three hundred cars a day. Look at like it's bound to change. Dude, I just listen. I just bought a nine eleven because I was like, you know what? Homie, oh, what did you buy? New. What did you yeah, buy? I bought, a, I bought a um an O two Carrera four S. Nine nine six. Slick top. Nine nine six. Yeah, and I I am a I have always been a massive fan of the nine nine six. And nobody else seems to like them. I think they're really cool. Stop. Stop. Uh, I well, actually, you want to keep talking about them because you want to boost them. But I'm, I'm like, everybody's still like quiet. On the no. Oh yeah. Not, not the good ones. The good ones are expensive already. <laughs> like a, a like a C4 cab. <laughs> yeah, they do. They and they they are still very affordable. You can still go out and you can get a ton of car for not that much money. So, Same thing with like. But yeah. Uh, is that nine? Is it nine eight six boxers? Oh, dude, seven ninety seven yeah. to like hey, great, like yeah. yeah. A buddy, yeah, that, a literally, a, a friend of mine just bought one forty six thousand miles. He paid nine grand. What? Jesus. Like, now, yeah, those two sevens are. He weird, might weird, weird. he might turn around and put that nine grand right back into it, but still, well, yeah. eighteen. It's, it's like a nine four four. Fun car for eighteen. That's a that's a. I mean. And it's still a Porsche. It, like yeah. they don't build crap. Like take it out and beat the crap out of it. And enjoy it. So I drove my first Porsche a couple of months ago. Nine four four non turbo manual. I had one of those. It was Great. amazing. I still think about it every day. You also mm-hmm. you also had a nine two eight, didn't you? Yeah, I had a. a I, I restored like an idiot. Um, <laughs> an eighty six. <laughs> yeah, nine twenty eight, which was a bucket list car for me. I always yeah. wanted one. So and I bought one. And I, Zach, Zach actually drove it. Zach reviewed it for a smoking tire, and uh, it's good. That was my commuter from San Francisco to L.A., Jeez. and it was great. And that's that's exactly what the 911 is going to be. It's that's get the, the 911 and just sit on the five at 110 miles an hour and go there and back. Yeah. Be fine. Perfect. You know, the sweet. best cross country car is a 911 turbo. Not going to argue. Conversation over not going to argue although although i will argue a little bit and throw any i, I am gonna i'll throw i'm gonna throw a, a red eye charger in there too Ooh, okay. because um that's red eye charger uh, means supercharger right the, like the red, red the eye charger, horsepower it's, charger. Yeah, yeah it's it's hellcat plus yeah, yeah okay. because um, that is the world's fastest sofa it's fast fastest yeah sofa. you're probably right you're probably right so good so yeah oh jesus I, that engine needs to make it so and a few other things like fabulous you know <laughs> 1500 ramp <laughs> mm-hmm. two-door single cab you know short mm-hmm. bed ramp. sport trucks yeah. need to make a comeback yeah. i couldn't agree more mm-hmm. yep eight thousand pound t-rex That's... is hard gonna do <laughs> yeah the, the t-rex and the raptors are their days numbered sport trucks yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> Definitely. Meanwhile, if you want to buy something that's appreciating, buy a Toyota X Runner. If you can find always one. bring these up. Because it's a fucking <laughs> rear wheel drive manu- you know, six supercharged. What is supercharged, right? Um there was an well, those- optional TRD supercharger. Yeah, blower on that. Yeah, I remember those. But the same era was also that psychotic TRD supercharged tundra, which comes yes. up all the time. And yep. it was ripping off like four and a half seconds, zero to 60s in like 2008, mm-hmm. which is crazy and factory warranty. So, yeah, yeah those are cool still truck. so good. So yeah. Good. These, these scream fast and furious to me. 100%. They're, they're, what, they're what I what mean, was the listen, first they look movie, like 99. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's that, exactly that was what it looks like. That was more like 2007. I'll own like, one of those to haul quads at some point, just purely like ramp angle to get into that mm-hmm. you don't even need a ramp you just pull up the tailgate and just we'll drive it on bump it yeah so holy crap that was like 2003 no there there were two different x runners there was an x runner the first gen tacoma had an x runner and an s runner 2001 was the first fast and furious film was which is what i was questioning because mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, tokyo drift was uh, 06 well, anyways, I need to go watch stuff. No, I mean, go to sleep. You're good. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do all the normal stuff. You guys can zone out for a little bit. So you can rate reviews on iTunes. You, Mike has his own podcast, Hot Rod Barbecue. Yes. Hot Rod Barbecue on the Hemmings channel. Yep. Don't forget Mike's show. 
uh like and subscribe on youtube we post the video of this on youtube if you want to watch me continue to talk while they both freeze um mike is on instagram at mike underscore musto it's md musto on twitter not as active on twitter are you i, I don't really understand twitter that much like <laughs> i it's literally, not, dude <laughs> i literally only talk to other car people on Twitter. That's uh, uh, car people only talk to car people. Yeah. And like I'm sorry, it's it's also like if you're a car person like I don't give a shit what you think about politics. Like I don't yeah, care I'm about just... your views on religion. Like I don't I don't care I I don't want I don't care. And nobody feel... nobody cares about Mike Musto's views on politics. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've curated my feed enough that it's very specific to kind mm -hmm. of weird car Twitter and weird off-road Twitter and mm -hmm. some vans and some unimogs and it's just perfect a celebration of jm yeah. vans <laughs> mm -hmm. yep so go on facebook and it's just oh cars cars cars, cars, cars. okay uh, good. i go on facebook long enough to share the weekly episode of the podcast and i get right back off perfect uh, and i don't get mad at anybody or disappointed no, uh, <laughs> no point <laughs> i'm not mad i just disappointed so uh, follow Hooniverse on Twitter, The Hooniverse, The Real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can read our writing now on The Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Rider, Car Bibles, The Drive, and that escalated quickly. Yeah, <laughs> all of a sudden we're all the places. Like, uh, like a month ago, I wasn't listing all of those, Mike. It was just read what we write on Hooniverse. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yep. So Ross fans, you can follow Ross at no, not like the one from friends since Ross is back and I'm at overlanding dad. And that's it. That's the show. We've done it. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having me on guys. I appreciate thanks for it. Coming on. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on the show.